same old trouble Villains always knocking at the door Pretty pictures on the page But nothing ever stays the same Thank you, Vandello, and welcome once again to Graphically Novel. My name is Josh Wasta, a.k.a. Fallout Fury. And with me, as always, is my trust of bro. <laughs> <laughs> bro. Bro. Bro, this, bro. Is, this is not a good This idea, is serious, bro. 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 Uh, my jerk de soleil. It's <laughs> 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 bear. <laughs> That's one of the better ones, recently. Yeah. Uh, and with us, as usual, the lovely and talented, our, our Kate Bishop. Did you know Kate Bishop? Fuck yeah. I can, I can tell you. I don't bro, know. What bro, is it? Kate Bishop, dude. Bro. Can, can, no. can I add hot sauce to this, Kate Bishop? No. <laughs> Am I not sassy enough? <laughs> It is the lovely and talented, the Baroness, uh, Ms. Jennifer Howland. Thank you, Bear. It's always my pleasure to introduce our guests. And today, I am very pleased to announce, in the same room with us Woo-hoo! today. On the road. Graphically novel on the road. Right. <laughs> we have Mayor and Hollywood. Hello. My very dear, dear friends. Yay! I'm so happy to be Yay! here in your lovely home. Yes! Thank, you. Yes. Thank you. Gorgeous house. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Unofficial third host of Rec Conversations, Mike. Yes, yes. <laughs> Whether I like it or not. <laughs> please, please, if you have not listened to Rec Conversations, go and listen to our two-parter on the first Civil War. And, or no. Our, our the first civil war, and then our two parter on the second civil war. Well, watch me slowly lose my mind, or listen to me slowly lose my mind. And just have a mental image of a man shaking his hands at the sky <laughs> in frustration. Often, often. That is, that is when, when, when we're talking about comic books, that is often what I yeah. am doing. Yeah. Yes. But, Mike, this is a different story. So, uh, give us a little recap of what you told us on Rec Conversations about your history of comics. I fucking hate them. <laughs> All right. All right. Hot start. <laughs> <laughs> and we're off. <laughs> Wait, but plot twist. But why was Hawkeye different? So here's the deal. Um, I uh, so if you've listened to my red conversation, any of my red conversations stuff, I have a big problem with how the aesthetics of comic book uh, capes are dumb. I feel like there's a lot of shit that just isn't uh, realistic. But I know that every single person at this table, other than me, really deeply connects with this media form of media. Wait, not bear. Mm. Oh, right, really? I, I'm I'm the he, least comic book inclined of the group. It's oh. our media guy. I'm the much more television inclined yeah. okay. person. So. Well, and I am I am while I am graphically novel inclined, I am much less superhero inclined. So I'm kind of with you. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. Well, what I'm trying to like, I guess. I guess what I'm trying to do is to try to understand this form of media a little bit better. And therefore, I went on a little quest, a little spirit quest, <laughs> to try to find something that I really deeply connected to. And there was stuff like Captain America and other things, like horror podcasts like Spider-Man and other things like, you know, Miles Morales and other horror. Uh, somebody gave me a bunch of horror stuff. I forgot the name of it, but it was great. And it, But I just kind of never... Hooked into mm. any of talk, this. Talk to us after the recording about things like uh, Legion and Immortal Hulk. Yeah, yeah, there was, uh, there's, <laughs> I don't even fucking remember what that bullshit was about, <laughs> like at this point. But I mean, like, but here's, here's the thing is that, like, I think that Hawkeye legitimately was different for me because I was like, wow, this is just a dude doing some stuff. And he's around a bunch of really, really important people, which is often how I feel about my own life, because I have a bunch of really, really talented people around me that do great things. And sometimes I was like, oh, man, I really connect with this character. So I was like, that's really cool. Big mood. Big yeah, mood. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there yeah. You go. yeah. Hawkeye, in a lot of ways, is uh, to, to go old school Buffy. He's the Xander of the Avengers. Like, no powers. You know, he, he, shoot, he shoots a bow and arrow good. Yeah. Like, that's his... Power. Yeah. And uh, we are going to keep the spoiler lid on this pretty tight because we do want you to read this comic. You really should. Matt Fraction's run of Hawkeye may be, in my opinion, one of the top uh, five comics, maybe even in the top three of the last decade. It is a phenomenal comic book. And as we've seen, the art style, the a lot of the plot points, characters, a lot of that was taken for the show. Um, 
But, so, um, I'm going to go around the table, and I am going to start with Mike. Um, first time reading this, like, what... What were your feelings on it? Because you read it before the show came out. Yeah, I did. Leia, Leia stuck it in your hands and said, "No, seriously, dude." Yeah, 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 yeah. Which was which was great, and I was like, "Okay, fine." Well, I mean, I, I the art style was drastically different from other things that I've read in comics, and I was like immediately like as. As a person who graduated from art school and a person who's been an artist my entire life and all that stuff, I immediately was like, wow, this is a really intense and beautiful style of drawing, drawing, artistry, um, drawering. Um, <laughs> I was like, do you like yeah. to do drawings? I, I do my drawings, yes. <laughs> yes <you know? laughs> and I like to do drawings. Yeah, so um, that was really cool. But I mean, also just the, also it was, I've never seen like, apartments drawn that way in a comic like like where it's like yeah these are just like this is normal everyday shit this is a shitty new york apartment yeah, yeah. and it just made it more real and so that was why i kind of gravitated to it more in a way i don't know some there there i really have a really hard jump the shark point with comics mm-hmm. and like fucking vision Vision's a, vision's a hard thing to... to we're gonna, we'll, yeah. we'll side that. We'll side that. That's a big story. We're, we're going around the table. But yes, I think that, that because it was so just down to earth, it was really like, able to you know, it. Tony Stark randomly going to Sovereign Nations on the Moon and kidnapping a dude and then torturing him. Like, you know, maybe a little bit too much. Yeah. Too yeah, much. Yeah, that's like, it's like, oh, okay, I guess that this person is truly just a villain then. And right. I'm sure a bunch of people that like really love Tony Stark right now are gonna go, well, let's go to the point. Um, but like, or 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 the exact opposite of like, that's why Tony Stark's awesome and can do anything he wants. Like, whatever. I don't know. Yeah. No. Elon Musk is not a superhero. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He's not. He's not a fucking superhero. He's not even a genius. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. So, Mayor, first time reading this. I haven't. I'm gonna be honest. Oh. Okay. I've only read the first, uh, the first issue because Mike had these by his bedside like they were his child. Um, and so, and he would, it was very cute because he would like look at them and like he'd kind of like go like 20 pages. He'd giggle to himself a lot. And he'd be like, you gotta, you gotta see this. You gotta see this. Um, and so I didn't get a chance to like read, read it. Um, I have watched the show and um, something I we talked about off that I love mentioning is that usually I am the one who has read the comic books and then have to like sit down with Leia and Mike, you know, when we watch something and Leia and I kind of tag team or we're like, okay, this is, this is why Dr. Strange is doing this. Okay. You know, this is why Captain America is doing this, this time. Um, but it was fun. And I think that I didn't want to read them, not because they were bad, but Mike's immense joy when he found out that they were going to do a Hawkeye show And he started seeing, like, clips and stuff from it. I was like, I don't want to read it because he's just so into it. Like, and I want him to be the person to be like, hey, this is what they meant by this, you know? Like, which was very, very enjoyable. Which is, yeah, it's a joy of comics. Mm -hmm. Like, especially when it gets to a good media representation. And we have seen both good, horrible on this show. We have. Um, (laughs) Bear, first time reading. I really enjoyed this comic. Um... Compared to a lot of the other ones, like it, it had a, it had a really great flow to it. Like the art style, I think we've I, we've probably had a few that were a little bit better with the art, um, but it was still you know it was still enjoyable. Um, there was the storyline just kept me even when it wasn't super in, like exciting or engaging. They they kept me there. They kept me interested in what was going on. So, like, yeah, this is, I, I will agree with you, this is probably in the top five just for the ability to, you know, keep me turning pages, even though, like, like we said, I'm not, I'm not the page turner guy, I'm the watch another TV guy. But this wasn't a, oh, God, I have some dishes I need to do with it. Yeah, no, this was not, <laughs> this was not Dark Phoenix, where it was just like, hey, I, uh, I know I pay somebody to mow my lawn, but I, 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 I want to go outside with a pair of scissors right now. Um, yeah, no, I... Like this, this, this kept me going. Like I was actually, uh, you know, interested to keep keep going with that. And I, I mean, I just finished it this morning, but I was I was kind of on a cram session. So, Jen, I really enjoyed it. I I was um, pleasantly surprised. I know that you have talked about Fractions Run on Hawkeye as being probably one of the best 
um, of the Avenger uh, runs. And I think you're not wrong. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I think that, um, you know, while it doesn't, you know, the show doesn't go beat for beat, but I think there's enough reference there that it's it's really enjoyable both ways. Mm-hmm. And there's definitely some stuff that they didn't have that I really wish that they did. Okay. Um, but I mean, like, because we're not going to talk about uh, yeah, <laughs> right. I, uh, There are certain things... <laughs> There are certain placements of logos that everyone loves <laughs> in this run of Hawkeye. And everyone who has read Hawkeye will understand what that means. Yeah. And everyone who hasn't read Hawkeye, I hope that gives you a really, <laughs> a really <laughs> funny, a really funny yeah. incentive to try to watch why, why logos are placed in certain places. Yeah, uh, so as uh, the show was kind of ramping up... Um, you know, obviously there were trailers and things, and I just continued to get more and more excited uh, because you saw things like the the tracksuit mafia, bro, 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 and you know Kate Bishop, obviously her mm-hmm. introduction, mm-hmm. Um, but even some more subtle characters like uh, Jack, who is the swordsman mm-hmm. in uh, in the comics, and is uh, kind of in, in the the brilliant thing that I think, especially with that character, is in the comics, um, which you don't get to in this this issue of Hawkeye, in the comics, Jack is Jacques, but he's also, the Swordmaster is both a good guy and a bad guy, depending kind of on who he's dealing with. Oh, okay. Like, he becomes friends with Hawkeye, but he's a Black Widow villain. Like, oh. he does not get along with Black Widow. Like, And so it's it's taking that aspect and then putting it in where you're actually left guessing, is he a good guy or is he a bad guy? Because Kate is suspicious of him, but that seems too obvious. And then at the end, he turns out to be brilliant. Yeah. You know? Um, those kind of aspects, I really fucking love out of this show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've actually got a question for Jen, and I'll give it to the rest of the table after I give it to her. You have a thing where you actually prefer, especially with these shows, things to be enclosed. Like not being... Oh my god, and then Captain America shows up, and then Black yeah. Widow shows up out yep. of nowhere, and yep. just to do it. This one skirted a line. Yeah. Because it, at the basis, it was introducing Kate, it was her vehicle, yeah. but then you do have uh, uh, Florence Pugh's uh, widow come mm-hmm. in. I mean, you've got some other subtle references, like to, to Clint's family, mm-hmm. there's a bunch of stuff. You actually find out more about his wife, who's already been introduced, um... Who was, uh, she was Freaks and Geeks, was the main character of Freaks and Geeks. Yes. Uh, but anyway. She was also in, his wife was also in Grandma's Boy. Was she? Was she? She was 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 the love interest in Grandma's Boy? okay. That's awesome. Uh, Well, you know, (laughs) pull up the D and see see what else she was Uh, Let me whip out the D. Yeah. (laughs) Um, do you think this show could have done a little bit more of pulling people from, uh, or would that have ruined it? Because the way they did it, I was impressed with. I liked the way they did it because I think the more other like big characters you pull in, you're pulling the focus away from Hawkeye and Kate Bishop. And that was the point of that series. And I think that I am sad that Black Widow got the treatment she did in her movie and um, not sad that Hawkeye got the attention that he deserved in that series. I just comparing those two. I really wish that they had done something similar for Black Widow that yeah. they did for uh, Hawkeye. Because I, I think it was brilliant. And and it, maybe it's because he doesn't have powers. He does. He is an incredible, stealthy assassin dude. Yeah. You know, he does have that power. That's not a normal person thing. You know, like he says in the in the series, he he's a ghost. His skill is nobody knows he's there. So, Mike... Uh, I'll move on to you since we're moving around the table. Um, could you have dealt with more, like, from the other movies, or are you pretty happy with who they brought in? You know, so I'm glad that you brought this up, because this is actually something that I've been thinking about recently, especially with the MCU. Um, I really like the new MCU uh, arc, other than the Eternals. I refuse to see that film. Um, I can, I'm, I, I, I'm sorry, I refuse much. to see that it's, film. it's fine. I saw it for you. You never have to see that okay, movie. Okay, cool. All I know is that, like, Blade shows up at the end, and I'm like, woohoo. Like, that's, that, like, yeah. all that. that you like, never have to see that movie. I did it for you. Thank you. Thank you so <laughs> much for, for doing this for me. 
Thank also, you. You're I, I, Your love I and love affection you. <laughs> is yes. I am so sorry it's okay. you did this for me. This this gift for all of humanity. <laughs> Just as a jump in, confirmed Linda Cardellini is the actress, both uh, Laura Barton and Samantha from Grandma's. Okay. All right. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Confirmed. Boom. Boom. Um, but yeah, uh, thank you for that. <laughs> but seriously, though, like, um, I have deep concerns about the trajectory of the MCU right now. It, I, I, because this is the only thing I understand about about um, comic books. Truly, like, right? Is the MCU? So I'm watching this post story arc. That they're just kind of like, oh yeah, remember we got all this other licensed material, and now I guess I guess we're gonna we gonna do something with it. <laughs> like and like it seems like every other show is the same thing or very repetitive. So which I so it, to, to to answer and this is a long form of answering this question. I wish they did pull in more stuff. I wish that they would start making this make sense. And I know that COVID. Kind of fucked that up. Yeah. Like, that's totally legit. Um, fucking COVID. Yeah, fucking COVID. Like, you know, totally legit. But I thought, like, I'm like, hey, y'all, like, where are we going? Like, yeah. that kind of thing. But so, that's just my... Do you sense. kind of feel like, this is where I'm thinking, is like, they're pulling in all this kind of side story arc character things. And because I feel like the main, like, super, super duper heroes... The wheels have fallen of everything. Yeah, yeah, you know, right. Like it's like, like yeah. people are dead. Things are, you know. So they've got to, they've got to go, and then it's going to come back. That's sure. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. Of course. That's why the whole multiverse mm, theory yeah. thing is like. But also at the same time, I in in truth form, and I know that some people are going to have some really interesting opinions about this. Uh, I don't want them to come back. Their story's done. Mm-hmm. It's over. Mm-hmm. Like the only person who I want to come back is Black Widow because she got fucked. I agree. That's the she, her story is bullshit. The yep. movie sucked. Yep. It was not fair yep. what they did to Black Widow and Black Widow's storyline, yep. and it's just kind of shitty in general. So like, I'm with you. so yeah, that's the only thing that I would be like, yep. especially because she sacrificed herself and was so fucking important. They deserve like that. That character deserves a fucking huge ass something. Well, yeah. and out of the six original Avengers, three of them are dead yep. or or old. It can't. Moved on. Yeah. Moved on. No, I don't think I'll do that. (laughs) Yes. Um, Bear, same question. What was the question again? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Sorry, I got lost. Would you have enjoyed more cameos from the outer MCU in Hawkeye? In Hawkeye? I don't know. I I think I would have... The only cameos that I think I would have liked would have been, uh, for example, um, like during WandaVision. If we would have had some of the... Like the scientists that we know, like having having Darcy show up, or well, Darcy wasn't. No, that's no, what in, I'm saying. In oh, Hawkeye, oh, okay. oh, in Hawkeye. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, start pulling Cat Dennings' character yeah. more. Yeah. Just or or other other smaller side characters, or her like and that. Randall Park's characters is kind of an uh, MCU X Files, something like that. But, you know, some some other minor side characters, or even pull in like I mean, they're running around in New York. If they would have pulled in. Um, What's her name? The high-powered lawyer from Defenders. Oh, uh, oh, they gender swapped her too for the played by Trinity. Yeah, you know. Uh, I was just gonna say, you know. <laughs> oh Trinity. yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh god, what? Well, there's a whole bunch of characters that yeah. they have brought in then, like that yeah. were that were just right. been in, you know, like, if they in just, New York. Like right. it doesn't like, have yeah, to. Like they don't have to walk Thor in in there right. to tie everything together. Well, like, you know, and, and I would have I would appreciate a little bit of the same thing, like with Moon Knight, if they would just. Included like just those those very small little side characters. Hogarth, yeah, yeah Hogarth. Yeah, Hogarth. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, Moon Knight. Well, that's another thing entirely. Mo- Moon Knight felt like it was just on its fucking own. Yeah, like there was. It, it's just a story that I mean, thanks for a cool story, but uh, I and I was okay with that actually. Yeah, I was okay with that too. Yeah, yeah. I was I was perfectly fine with that because I felt like that story was enough. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, um, but I'm sorry. Yeah, you sure. know, yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah, we we have a lot to say. Evidently, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, but just seriously, like I said, it, you don't have to. You don't have to have Thor show up. You don't have to have right. Hulk show up. You don't have Tony Stark show up. You know, having Hogarth show up, having you know Foggy, Foggy slide in and be like, "Hey, here's my card, just in case you need anything." Just like on a walk yeah. by, it's yeah. just like. You look like you're in trouble here. Here's my card. You know, or like they made Claire and uh, and Karen Page kind of the the 
lower level people that kind of went through the Netflix show. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Like okay, a, a, yeah something those, like that. Yeah. Any of those characters could have been brought in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, just and kind of... that would have given me a little bit more sense of continuity that we were working in the same universe. Now, do I think that I still I still think that like this is Hawkeye's show. Like this is he's got a little side mess he needs to clean up, so he doesn't want to bring in anybody else. Right, this and is that's like, what I kind of felt yeah, like. This is his little embarrassment. He's he not just... from New York. He doesn't live there. Nope. He's just there for a little vacation, yep. to, and then he and has then to clean up. Trouble the starts, yeah. and then now I have to. Yeah. I have to clean up this little embarrassing bit of my past so that because now it's causing problems for other people. So like I need to go take care of this problem. Um, I need to make sure that my past doesn't inadvertently harm somebody else. Right. And I just need to wipe it out, be done with it and move on. Well, and he seemed like, you know, well, we learn later in the series that he's also protecting Laura. Exactly. Yes, but that was that was very subtle, and that took me a minute to figure out too. Yeah. Like, yeah. But like I said, there could have been just to get that sense of continuity. Just throw in one of those those other minor characters. So, Mayor, uh, could you have done with some more? So I think that um, everyone has very good opinions, uh, and I like hearing them. So thank you for sharing. Them. Um, I liked it how it was. Um, I thought it was enough. And I think that, you know, Mike had mentioned this, I think that a lot of times it's oversaturated. Um, we talk about, is it uh, Civil War? No, not Civil War. Oh my gosh, what, why am Infinity I just... Infinity War. Infinity War. And <laughs> Endgame. Well, I mean, Infinity Endgame. War is before everybody gets Endgame snapped. was like, people started to have these moments, like, like, like Black Widow sitting there and she's super sad and depressed and life is not great. And I'm like, tell me more about Black Widow. And they're like, well... Cat, uh, Captain Marvel's gonna save everyone. And I'm like, but what about... And they're like, the movie has ended. And I'm like, but <laughs> let's go back to that. So I felt that it was good that they kept it kind of insular in that in that sense. I, I agree, if We like, maybe a side character from another one of the shows could have come in. I think that would have been fine. But, yeah, I, I really liked how they kept it. Because you learn more about Hawkeye. Because Hawkeye, in my opinion, in the movie is is not an interesting person. Like, in the previous movies, I'm like, Hawkeye's the most least interesting Avenger. I do he's, not care. He's also not supposed to be. Like, right. this comic illustrates how boring of yeah. a person compared to the other Avengers yeah. Hawkeye is. Yeah, in terms of, like, character development, though, because the only time you, like, really, like, connect with Hawkeye previous to this was the snap where it's that cold open and everyone's gone, you know, and he's running out there and Mike and I are sobbing and it's been only like 30 seconds yeah, into the film. Yeah, that was a little rough. That was a little rough. And so you're like, holy shit, that was really, you know, a lot. And I just feel that it was good in that regard that we got to connect more with Hawkeye, connect more with Kate Bishop too. I think they shared the screen evenly. Um, I don't think it was it was one or the other. Um, and then the cameos that were there were good. They, they weren't overbearing. Like, I wasn't like, Jesus, okay, like, can we get back to Hawkeye? So, sh- long and short of it, I think it was good. Yeah, um, so I was thinking about this uh, as everybody was going around, and I think Jen kind of nailed it by comparing it to Black Widow. Both Rest in peace. have what may be my favorite current MCU character and that is that's that's yes she's a yeah, yeah yeah and the soon to be princess Irulan in Dune 2 uh but what we run into is she is so magic that when she is on the screen everyone else takes a second yeah 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 position and that was done in Black Widow to introduce her but they were trying to do the same thing that they were doing in Hawkeye where Clint and and uh, Kate had equal kind of screen time in, in their story. Yeah. They tried to do that with Natasha and Elena, but Elena's just so much more interesting of a character yeah. that she elevates it. Like, the big scene that we get with Elena in, uh, in, well, a couple of them, is with Kate, which is great because Kate is kind of her own force of nature kind of pers- personality, and she's holding her own, you know... But, I mean, Elena's still more interesting. Elena obviously takes that more uh, front row I don't role. Know. Can I add hot sauce? Right. Um, or, you know, it, it, it would not have worked the same way if you had had a 
uh, Spider-Man appearance or, you know, the, these other characters that once they hit the screen, it's just all about them. You know, I'm, I'm at this point, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, spoil a little bit of uh, No Way Home. So fast forward 15 seconds if you haven't seen No Way Home. Or no Way Home. Uh, Daredevil showing up in, or Matt Murdock, showing up specifically in No Way Home. That one cameo. Anything else that happened in that scene, who cares? Yeah, who right? fucking yeah, cares? Because yeah, yeah. it was yeah. Matt Murdock catching a fucking brick before Spider-Man could. Yep. And no selling, like, oh yeah, no, blind people can do this because we're a really good lawyer. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. those kind of cameos and those kind of appearances are great for a scene. Because it's not all about them yes. moving forward. But that one was very important to me personally. For as much as I enjoyed the Defenders, mm-hmm. like, and I liked all the Defenders. I even liked Iron Fist, so you can hate on me all you want. Um, but just having that moment of, now look, we've tied it back to the, the Netflix, now back to Disney+, Plus, but, you know, to the Defenders right. series. So just having that, just those subtle little things is, is a big help, I think. Mm-hmm. I need to ask you a question. You said Elena is a far more interesting character to you than Black Widow. And that Kate Bishop also is interesting to you because of who she is. You also like Spider-Man. You like smart-ass characters. Is that what you're attracted Have, to? I mean, you yes. met your husband? I, I wanted him to say yes. <laughs> Get it on the recording, Bear. Stop the recording. Out there in the universe. I, I think that... I control the record. <laughs> I am the record. I, I, am the, I am the boss. I am the one who edits. <laughs> I, I feel like Black Widow, reason that I'm not sure that she's a more interesting character to me. I think that she takes your interest okay. and pulls your interest so you are more interested in what she has to say because she has a quick wit and she has something snappy to say all the time. Whereas Black Widow is much more introspective and much more empathetic. I also point. have the thought that she has much less screen time so she is something shiny and new that Josh will like. Mm. Nah. I mean, I okay, I watched... Two seasons with Vincent D'Onofrio's Kingpin, and mm. uh, when he showed up in Hawkeye, that's that's the other one that that I was going to bring so, up. Uh, I totally you forgot are, about that. Yeah, that so is good. actually that was perfect. Yeah, you're yep. layering in so because yeah. Elena doesn't show up until the very end of the third episode. She's a like kind of she has the one scene mm-hmm. in the fourth episode with right. Kate, and then she's kind of there, but as a as a you know a, a member of the team, but not getting front and center. Kingpin does shows up at the very end of the fifth episode. Yes, and, and doesn't really make his presence picture. known. Yeah, yeah, but yes, but also then immediately is written out. Well, mm. no, because he he. I mean, they have their big fights and everything, and the big culmination. And yeah, but at the end, they basically are like, "Oh, by the way, Kingpin doesn't matter anymore." In a comic book way, I know. So, yeah. but as a okay, so okay, so so. But yeah. here's the thing. Yeah. I'm not a comic book writer. Right, right. Yeah. I don't, so you told me in a storyline that you this guy is now fucking dead. This really cool character that I used to watch the Netflix shows for. Yep. And I, I loved, loved and they totally took him Except away. his body was gone. Well, no, what I'm saying yeah. here is that as, as a non-comic right. book reader and a person right. on the outside, mm. this is kind of some shady bullshit. That's not really a comic book thing, though. If you don't see a body, but also yeah, if, you, <laughs> if you watch yeah, all, of, I guess. if you I watch know. any horror movie, sure, yeah, I you know, know, I know. If you yeah. watched all of Daredevil, I, I though, you're going to be all comfy, I found it and a then the big cheap. bald yes. fat man is going to show up behind yes, you. Yeah, <laughs> I found. It, I just, I guess, I found it a little cheap. I found it to be like, I was like, mm, Disney, okay. you didn't need yeah. to do that. You didn't need to write, be like. Hey, everybody, remember this cool thing that happened, but you know what? We don't have to worry about it, right? So if anybody's really mad about it, we could just, you know, put it back. Right. It seemed like it was a, it was written by, um, by fucking Boardroom. And it just seemed like shitty writing and cheap writing to me as a person who writes stories. Yeah. It was like, if you want to commit to a storyline, commit to the fucking storyline. Have right. the character come through. Don't be worried about the fucking mouse, bo- uh, the mouse's bottom line. Well, and have but that's that's also a Star Wars problem too. Right. So I mean, whatever. But have have Clint and Kate win? Have them, you know, have worked out their shit with Echo? Like, have them, you know, uh, they've they've taken care of uh, the the guy that turned on uh, Echo's dad. Sure. Like that whole thing. 
all of that gets tied up. And then the very last, or the post credit scene even, is like, high rise, gorgeous huge window in this skyscraper, Kingpin smoking a cigar looking out, and basically explaining, you know, while they were busy, we, we got this thing. Because Kingpin, that's, that's his thing. It's always a Xanatos gambit. It's always, no matter if I lose, I'm going to win something. Sure. And this was not done in that way, which I think is frustrating. Yeah. Um, because you're introduced to this character, and you're supposed to think that he's a lot smarter and a yeah. lot better than he turns out to be. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, the ending is basically Kingpin sucks. Well, well I, I think, see, I didn't get the same reaction. I think that it, it, they have created a slightly different Kingpin in the Netflix series, because... Yes, Kingpin would lose his temper and, you know, do something, but he was always following this, like, plan within a plan no, within a plan. But plan, in the yeah. network series, in that Netflix series, there were a couple of times where he lost his temper. Like, he had yes. blind rage. Yeah. And I think that they are... Ooh, see the car door scene. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So That's I the first time you see it. I think that they are creating a slightly different Kingpin. So Which I'm fine with. I am too, because Kingpin v. Spider-Man in the comics makes me want to, like, bludgeon myself. Hey. Oh, God. Because it's, it's, it's quippy fighting. Oh, oh it's, okay. you know, it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm too smart to, be, oh, well, you're too smart. It's like, just fucking do something. Oh, okay. Stop. Also, it's a lot of fat. Just... Yeah. But, see, my whole reaction to seeing the, well... All we hear is the we see the the camera trail away and the gunshot. I I didn't have I was left wondering. I'm like when King. My thought wasn't Kingpin's dead. My thought is when Kingpin gets back, how horribly scarred is he? Because we already know that his whole suit is bulletproof. Yeah. So the only shot that she had on him was literally in the head. Yeah. So that's I came back going. They're not gonna kill him. They're not going to kill him. They're already. They're still already talking about making another season of Daredevil. Well, he uh, actually was just suggested that Daredevil and Kingpin will both show up in the Echo okay. on TV there series, which will kind of be a backdoor new season of Daredevil, probably. Yeah. Sure. Like, yeah, I'll it's take like, that and spin it off into the. New but season okay, it's unfortunate they never did a season two of Daredevil. Walk with me this direction, <laughs> there. Walk with though. me this direction. Okay. This is the the MCU universe. This is the weird tech universe. This man has lots of money and knows that lots of people want to kill him. I think he has like a what vibranium skull implants. Right, and you're introducing. uh, Oh no, because vibranium is never mind. I was thinking of adamantium. Mm-mm. Or is an adamantium skull, and it's hey, hey you don't hey. have vibranium, and then all of a sudden it's like yes, there's there's another metal that is just as strong. I think what we're gonna see is we're gonna see at some maybe not directly related to this. I don't know what their plan plan is for Echo, but like they're gonna you're gonna see like kingpin sitting up from a hospital bed or yeah you know like have a hospital bed in his own like of course manhattan he would not apartment. be in a hospital yeah. he's gonna have yeah. hospital <laughs> hospital equipment in his own manhattan apartment he's gonna sit up and he's like unwrap and it's you know it's just gonna be oh look they did a very good job with their reconstruction right you know? yeah that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And then but he's I want to see. Be really pissed and off. You know, Claire has to be the one that. Uh, I don't think I that's going to happen. No, that would be good. <laughs> what I would love to see is hospital bed in a room, completely blank walls except for Rabbit in the Snow. It, I mean, yeah, exactly. Oh, that would be really right? devastating. To yeah. Him. Yeah, that would yeah. be really good. Yeah. 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 And just him just like fucking just being, just sitting, like, he sits just, off just and shooting just, back and forth to the, the yeah. picture. To him. Right. The picture. To, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know. And like it's on the wall. Off <laughs> yeah. Sit it up, seat it up and it's right or there. Or it's <laughs> going to be, uh, what's her name that was, you know, the woman he was dating that's like unwrapping the bandages mm. from his head going, well, they did an amazing job with the reconstruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, something like that. Yeah, what was her name? The gallerist? Oh, Vanessa? Vanessa. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, sorry. I, I obviously love Kingpin. Love Vincent D'Onofrio. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. Awesome. incredible. We screamed. <laughs> So good. We screamed, and so that's good. that's one of Mike's favorite 
Uh, he's a horrible MCU character, and I love him. So he is a great Vincent villain. Vincent D'Onofrio he plays is a so, psychopath he's so, so good. well. Man. And in interviews, he's like the like he's of course like the nicest person. Yes. People are asking like, "Are you going to be in Kingpin?" He's like, "I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know what that role is. What do you mean?" Like, and just played dumb the entire time, and then apologized. He's like, "I'm very sorry that I lied to everybody." Uh, and I was like, you can do whatever you want. Like, yeah. I, like, I don't care. Um, but I remember the impact of it. And we talk about how um, characters having that one scene. But I remember, like, Leia had told us, she's like, Mike, just wait. Mike, just wait. Mike, just wait. And it happened. And Mike was like, what? Like, he's just screaming. He's Because like, he loves Kingpin. And that worked out really well. I think they fit it into the series well where it wasn't fucking random. Like right. again, like yeah. we talk about the movies, how they're like, just pick an Avenger you want. We haven't done in a while. Um, I think it went smoothly. I do agree with Mike in the sense of too, like, I do hope that I know that came to me back in echo. Um, but yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I, I'm also a person who I love Kingpin so much that he can do whatever he wants. So like, he could have been <laughs> in all of Hawkeye and I've been like, this was perfect. What are you talking about? Speaking of Kate Bishop, because Kate Bishop is another one that is introduced in the long line of Young Avengers that, start, that have started to be introduced. Um, we've talked about it as, as a balance. Was this Clint's show, or was it Kate's? Why can't they be both? I think it's both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, we, we talked about it. Is, yeah. is Thor Ragnarok a Thor movie, or is it the greatest Hulk movie that's been written so far? Well, it's the greatest Hulk movie that's been written so far, but... But yeah, right, yeah. rights to Hulk as a right. thing, you know, we got to give yeah. him back from Paramount before we can actually do stuff. Right. Yeah. I think that, I think what we talked, we touched on this. It's, it's 50, 50. I think that Kate had a good story where she had the, she, she had more time, I think, because Hawkeye had all this filler already. We already mm. know where he comes from. Where did he go? Where did he go from? Stop it! <laughs> you stop that! <laughs> but, uh, Meredith! <laughs> I have a spray bottle right here. <laughs> don't, so, don't make me use your full name. Oh, no. No. <laughs> no! Anyway, um, but the thing is, is that we, I feel that, and then the Hawkeye pieces, I felt were like, okay, like, what's happening with Clint now? Okay, like, he, he's against the clock with his family. And there's also, he's got to get his suit back. There's all these aspects. And Kate has a nice intro that's not long, you know what I mean? But it's still good. So I thought it was it was both a Hawkeye and a Kate Bishop Here's a show. question. is Does it make a difference if it's a Hawkeye or a Kate Bishop show? If we called it Ronin, hmm. would it change anything? I don't think Ronin was a legacy aspect of it. But I don't think it was where the focus should. If yeah, that makes sense. I agree. Sense. Yeah, I agree. Well, and I think that it was kind of a little bit of both. It was a good introduction to Kate Bishop. Um, I would have liked a little more Hawkeye, just because, unlike Josh, I found Kate Bishop to be fucking annoying. Uh, <laughs> we all know that Josh has a pension for these kind of like like teen drama things. That's so true. also true. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> her mom, her mom is the best, though. I love her mom, her mom and Jack. Is the best, and Jack is the best. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, this is really because, like, you know, it is different from the uh, comic, so it was very. Yeah. I, was I, like, I oh. really appreciated all of the little things that they put in that humanized all the characters. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> the the phone call between Clint and his son that he couldn't hear mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. his hearing aid was. Broken. Also, we haven't talked about that aspect. Making him hard of hearing is super important for this mm-hmm. character, and yes. also a reflection of the Fraction comics. Yeah, um, the all the the relationship issues between Kate and her mom. The thing that actually I really enjoyed out of most of that those little bits like that was the the fight between Kate and Jack. Mm-hmm. Um, having spent like many years in Boffer Larp. And, uh, you know, a few years in miscellaneous martial arts and stuff like that. I I understood the second that she was like, so I fought him and he's lying. He's holding something back. He's not telling you the truth. And it's just like, and she just doesn't understand. And until you've done that for a while and you get into that, that sort of thing, you don't understand how you can figure out a person's tells. Yeah. By just having, you know, getting into a physical altercation with them. 
Um, so by for me, them, yeah, by yeah. sparring with them, by, yep. you know, and you're just like, no, you're not, no, stop letting me win. Yep. No, stop it yes. right now. You're pissing me off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I can tell that you're better than you're, than yeah. you're performing right, right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jack. I love Jack. Well, Jack and I thought fun. it was good because it did, it also brought in, like you said, Mayor, it, it gave Kate's background, which the comic does not. Yeah. Kate just yeah. gets dropped down. Yeah. Kate is yeah, here. Like, Kate this is, is Kate just Fisher. a character. Yeah, yeah. She's just here. She's here. And, but it gave the background like all the way back to her childhood mm-hmm. in the TV series. Yeah. And, you know, I like the play of the poor little rich girl, especially when she interacts with Yelena. Yes. Yeah. You know? Yes. And, uh, uh, to to go back a little further when we're talking about the family dynamics, um, a non spoiler spoiler, Hawkeye does a very good job with it. Ms. Marvel fucking facts. Ms. Marvel's family dynamics. Oh God, yeah, so good. Are amazing. That, I'm excited. We're still doing another. We're still yeah. have an episode. Yes, we do. Yeah, yeah. 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 We're, we're, we're not going to talk. We're not going to talk about. We're not going to talk yeah. about it. I, I I will say though, it, it without giving any spoilers to Ms. Marvel. I'm finding, um, and Mike and I have had this discussion, that I'm enjoying the television shows 400 times more yes. than the movies. And it, it sucks because, like, like we watch um, Doctor Strange. Uh, gotta, fi- gotta have a way to sell that Disney Plus, though, you know? The, uh, but, but, give to the mouse! Give to the mouse! Yeah. You know, but like, we had I, watched the new Doctor Strange movie, and I was like, this was good. I enjoyed it. It was a Sam Raimi horror movie. Yeah, but, yeah. but when yeah. We, we talk about, like... Like, Mike was, like, enamored with, like, Moon Knight and mm-hmm. Hawkeye, and WandaVision was, like, Same a buddy. whole... Yeah. <laughs> WandaVision yeah. was beautifully done and perfect. So, like, everything was good, and so I'm finding that a lot of enjoyment is coming from the TV shows, and I hope that they maintain that. Yep, a the lot. The thing that kills me about it, and I was thinking about this the other day and haven't brought it up to anybody, because uh, I've been milling around in it, is people will give you the argument that um, you have more time in the t- um except... Disney kind does of? Disney does six episodes at twenty minutes apiece. It's two hours. Yeah. yeah. So no. You so no, not. they don't have more time. And right. also, I would like to remind everyone and everyone listening that Disney can literally do whatever the fuck it wants. It's also it is true. made out of money and is yeah. basically a god. Yes. I mean, yeah. so if it wants, it is very. Like, if we went back to our episode of American <laughs> Gods, I'm surprised we never saw the mouse wandering. <laughs> I mean, that's like literally, like, right? I mean, like, so, like, it is, this is very much, and I'm not to sound like a fucking conspiracy theorist or some shit, but, like, but like they, this is a choice that Disney mm-hmm. is making. If they wanted to make more longer pieces or shorter movies or, like, stuff like uh, the final Avengers with, you know, where it was three, fuck, what, three and a half, four Hours three hours. Long. Yeah, three hours long. I mean, it's like, yeah. they can do that sort of shit if they wanted to. Yeah. yeah. It's, they, right. it's, all, it's all, they, there's no one that's telling them no. But they pay particular <laughs> attention to the characters, and I, I just feel like it's cared for more um, in versus the movies. I just feel yeah. like the characters yeah. are loved and cared and understood in deeper because um, I feel like if Moon Knight, for example, was a movie, I don't think we would have gotten that deep with him. It would have no. been like, here he is. Yeah. You saw an Egyptian guy. I don't, that's I don't it. think people you know. would have enjoyed that. You no. know, because you, yeah. you can only take, especially with Moon Knight, yeah. you can only take like that level. Like if if you're not used to dealing with this type of like Hello, mental disability, Jessica Jones, right? Oh, Jessica well, Jones yeah. too. You, you can't Christ. cram that all into no. two hours on no. the big screen. No. I could will, not. I would not be able. Well, to but, sit yeah, but also can't Netflix, process that Netflix, shit. Netflix was ten episodes an hour each, mm-hmm. so. Netflix still, is it, what that was still three movies. Like, right? Again, let's look at Moon Knight, though. Yeah. Would you have been able to sit through all of that yeah. in one sitting? I no. have. That would have driven me goddamn <laughs> crazy. <laughs> yeah. I have on a rewatch, but, but yes, I, I understand. Like, I might saying. have developed yeah. another personality watching that movie if I had to <laughs> sit down and watch the entirety of Moon Knight with not even, uh, you know, credit breaks, the ability to get up and go grab another drink, like... Well, I also think that with the, the the TV series are more cared for. That's my feeling, and that they do less of the gratuitous like cameos or nods or put things like Thor: Love and Thunder was like God. If I I can't even count all of the cameos, like the little 
bits and pieces from other movies and other stories that got pulled into that movie. But the TV shows just seem to be so much more humanized. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to guess. Thoughtful. I'm going to yeah. guess that you, that this table will be split depending on who is more of a comics person. Mm-hmm. But do you believe the movies are more for comic book readers and the TV shows are more for the fan? Which you would think would be reversed. But it seems like from what we've been talking about, the non comic book reader, the TV shows are more meant to fill them in and, and pull them in. Well, I will give you an answer, and it's based on my fake husband mm-hmm. prefers the TV shows to the movies because he doesn't like superheroes. Super yeah, friend of the show who we will never have on, John Hildebrand, because he yeah. doesn't want to read it. Because he doesn't <laughs> like, I don't blame him. I don't blame him. He doesn't like them. And he doesn't, he doesn't like superhero movies. Yeah, that's legit. Yeah. And, you right. know, and but he does like some of the TV shows, and I think that it is, that it's just, it's... It's a more interesting story because it's more relatable. Right. I think that when we saw the blowback of Wanda with a lot of people being like, what the fuck's wrong with Wanda? Why is Wanda acting like this? She's a fucking Avenger. And it showed how many people truly never watched WandaVision. Mm -hmm. I think we're seeing a major problem that is starting to grow and occur from this. I don't think it's whether or not who wants to see more or whatever. I think that there's going to be camps that are going to be only know the story. That they're only going to know their type of story because they've only seen part of the bits and bobs. Are, the and people that are watching the movies but haven't bothered to shell out for the Disney Plus subscription so they don't know everything that's going on in between. But yeah. Paul, WandaVision and Doctor Strange is a good example because I'm a comic book reader. I know Wanda is fucking unstable and is a villain just about as much as she's a hero. Mm -hmm. Even if I had not watched WandaVision, had I walked into that movie and been like, oh, Wanda's the villain. That makes sense. Oh, she's got a hold of the the, the Ultimate Evil book. Uh, Totally totally cool. You're surprising me here. We're good moving on. But there are people who watch the the big blockbuster Avengers MCU movies that don't read the comics. But that's and not the that's original... Who, right, that's, that's not the original question. I know, but I'm yeah. saying, yeah. To, to Mike's point, those are the people who are just like, this is bullshit, this isn't how this character should be behaving. Yeah, And yeah. I think that's that's where the this core is, of the question goes. This is probably is, the... Is the movie... Are the movies for comic book readers? And if you didn't read everything else, fuck you. Like... Otherwise, if you're a casual viewer, I think the, here's a TV show. I think the movies are more so for the casual viewer. Okay. Except that Disney has gone off the rails and doesn't really give a fuck if they get it or not anymore. Okay. They're just like, listen, we're made out of so much fucking money and people love this shit so much. We're just going to put it out. And if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Well, you know? no, no, what, what you were saying, I think, honestly, I think I would have been one of those people mm-hmm. if I hadn't been part of this podcast. If I would have just watched the movies... And just moved on, I'd have been like, what the ever-living fuck is going on here? I think that's pretty much how I would have walked into it all. But I've got enough, you know, sense of my own to look at it and go, okay, well, we saw we saw Infinity War, we saw Endgame, and then we see WandaVision. It's like, well, if you had unlimited cosmic power and you just lost the love of your life, what the fuck are you going to do when your brain breaks? Yeah. I'd have done the same thing. Yeah. yeah. I'd have done yeah. worse. Yeah, yeah. 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 I see I think that the I think the movies are for the comic book because like I know enough. I know enough about the Avengers. I know enough about the uh, about Marvel before the MCU that I feel I follow along better with the TV shows than I do the movies. Mm-hmm. I think the movies have a cuz Leia I love that we're talking about Leia. We're going to see Leia in like two minutes. Um, <laughs> Leia will say, oh, by the way, more so when we watch the movies. Because she's, oh, yeah. you know, and show, and I feel that the movies are, have like eight million nuggets for like comic book people. I feel that they, in the TV shows, I feel it's more approachable because there are times in the comic book movies where I'm like, what the fuck was that? Like, what? what? And yeah. Leia's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, I had to explain but with the TV shows, we don't have to pause it and have her explain because it's yeah. more approachable. Yes. Yeah. So I, I and they explain a lot more. There yeah. are points of of the shows that Jen will get done with the episode. She'll be like, "Okay, who's this person in the comics?" Because they were put front and center in a way yeah. that I picked up that they're a nod to something. 
but I don't know what they're a nod to. Yeah. Right. And, you know, it may or may not get explained in the TV show, but I think it's okay because when they do that in TV shows, that character is might be fan service. Sure. It might not actually be any, yeah. like, pull into the plot. Maybe it is, and they're hoping for another season, and mm-hmm. they'll, they'll pull that person in. But, yeah, I, I, I do feel like I agree with you, Mayor. The, the whole the TV shows do a lot better job at explaining things mm. because it's such a it's such a micro view yes you know and and the movies where while they may be focusing on a specific character are a much ma- much more macro yeah like yeah. A broader yeah. Brush. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah here's a, here's a separate thought so I I agree now that we've been talking about it more I think the movies are for the comic book readers but I think the TV series are for the younger kids, like the the teens, the youths, the, the youths, the youths, the, 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 the teens and preteens who you know in a family where you listen, I've already got Disney Plus for my little kids, and they're over here watching the Crudes. And, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. What's for these teens? Right? Or, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What? Like the, we might as well. We might as well squeeze this it's in. Like a weird ass fucking like. That's not even. That's not even. It's, 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 not, it's, it's also not, not even Disney. It's not even Disney. It's not even Disney. Yeah, it's not even a fucking Disney thing. This is the cruise. Yeah. So, so is it a family? Uh, what, what the is, is it a family of vegetables uh, on a train? <laughs> <laughs> no I know it's all about vegetables. Don't don't it's, get it. No, I'm not about vegetables. Yeah, it's I'm like the to watch I know. I said you know all about. Or there is it's, it like Chevy it's, Chase? It's are there like, like uh, it's like the uh, shitters? What was the what was the uh, the dinosaur? Uh, no, it was uh, Ice Age. It's like Ice Age. It's like Ice Age or Land Before Time, but instead of being. Critters, it's cavemen. Yeah, it's like a, a knockoff of Ice Age. You know, yeah. like the squirrel. But people. why? Because money. Because it's funny. Uh, okay, okay, so anyway. Anyways, um... but you've already, got, you've already got Disney for the little kids shows. Yeah. But I happen to now have some some teens and pre, you know, preteens and teens in my household. And they want to know more about this Avengers show that they just saw. So here's WandaVision. I kind of think that that's what they're Holy shit. For. I would not put WandaVision in front of a preteen. Holy fuck No. no. Yeah. But, no, but you put Ms. Marvel in front of them. But, um, yeah. 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 But to support your point there, I think that, like, for example, when I watched Hawkeye, which was, like, a show that I had no previous knowledge except my giggling in bed sometimes. Um, <laughs> I Sorry, there are some funny fucking things in that yeah, But Mike there would are. say, oh, this is, like, he would say, like, oh, it's, you know, it's it's the tracksuit mafia. It, but it was implied that, like, these are funny bad guys. You know what I mean? I didn't have to have Mike stop it and explain it to me that these that this is happening. Right. Um, whereas but in, when you actually see the tracks, I feel them. that they do a lot of action more so than they do, they, they like, a throwaway line. Like bro, they, they, I love Imagine Dragons. <laughs> <laughs> bro. I'll kill you, bro. I'll kill you, bro. You, you, you uh, a little Keystone Cops moment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's no, what the they, tracksuit mafia does. They're ridiculous in every form of their presentation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but what I'm saying is, is that I feel that the shows do a lot of action rather than just saying a one line or someone just shows up. They, like... I don't have to be explained these things. I don't have to know, like, okay, this is the bad guy. Okay, this is the good guy. Okay, this is his backstory. Okay, sure. this is what's going on. I feel like it just, it's just more approachable. I, I think it's it's 100% more approachable. Um, you get more bite-sized pieces. Yeah. Right. And yeah. also Hawkeye kind of has that kind of cavalcade of clusterfuck kind of, like, <laughs> thing going on, right? I mean, where it's like, it's like this big thing happened. I and love this, that phrase. Right? I mean, right? It's like, you know, it's like this happened, and then this happened, and this happened, and now there's these dudes in fucking track suits yeah. that are fucking following right. What the fuck? Like, you know, like, and... Honestly, I think that's almost more just, like, a tension breaker. It's just, like, this bad thing happened, and this bad thing... Just... The one little spoiler from the comic book, this looks bad, and then this looks bad, <laughs> yeah. and then this looks bad, yeah. and then this looks bad, and then, oh my god, there's a tracksuit mafia? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. even you think about the, the car scene with the with the trick arrows, like, Mike was crying. Because, was that, literally because crying. that's straight out of the comic. It is straight the, out of the comic, of the comic. Yeah. yeah. But it, but he was, but the thing is, is we were both able to enjoy it in yes. different aspects, where he got to enjoy it because he read the comic. And I got to enjoy it because it's fun. And we both get to, I mean, we both get to enjoy it because it's fun. But it just is, I just feel, like I said, in the movies, I don't think that's always the case. Right, no, I I completely agree. Uh, I want to jump off of that, though, and ask you, Mike, because this is the first time 
that you've really had that experience of you know the source material. Mm-hmm. You're the guy. Before. Did you find you had more of a of a enjoyment of the show because of that, or like because that's how a, this like, is an ongoing conversation oh, that we wow. have. This is a very text, interesting yeah. text first or video first, right? Also, books. Do you want to read the book or do you watch a movie first? Yeah, like, oh, okay. the same kind yeah. of thing. Only with, I mean, with comic books, you're dealing with 60, 70 years of history. You know, yeah. Did you watch? Yeah. Did you hear about Harry Potter and read the Harry Potter novels? Not, I mean, we all hate J.K. Rowling. Uh, She's yeah. a turf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But before we knew she was a turf, we all either saw the books or saw the movies first or read the books first. Sure, sure, sure. You know. Yes. So I, I totally get it. I was always historically a read the book person first. Um, like, you know, like I was always like, I like, because I feel like books, writers intrinsically are allowed more space to provide context mm-hmm. without the visual medium. Mm-hmm. We could know what's going on in people's brains. Mm-hmm. We can know what people are thinking. We can know what people, are th- you know, you you can slip in historical context and things like that. Sure. So I feel like literally, uh, uh, liter- literarily, stories are a little bit more expanded upon. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I also think that allows for people to get shitty about that. Yeah. See, and mm-hmm. me personally, for the last... Almost 20 years now, mm-hmm. I have been a watch the movie or TV sh- series first before reading. Okay. Um, and it happened to me with Dune, of all things. Mm-hmm. Because I watched I watched a David Lynch many yeah. years ago, and yeah. I was just like, this is entertaining, but it, it, like eh, it's a little cheesy, and you know, I'm just like, okay, whatever, fine. Then I see the sci-fi, the two sci-fi miniseries. Sure, I'm yeah. Just like, I, okay, I, gotta, yeah. I gotta read this book. Yeah, yeah. And... Because I'm like, this is all super, you know, super interesting, and I want to find out more about it. So now I go back, and now I read the book, and now I read the book, and I go, "Wow, this is a lot. This is amazing." Yeah, yeah. And now I am not disappointed by either of these two mediums. Sure. I have the thing that introduced me to it, and the thing that expanded upon it, as opposed to if I read the book first, and then I go to the movie. I mean, let's face it, you just, most of these books, you're just not going to be able to cover everything. Sure. And so you sit there with Josh's brother Phil sitting beside you in the movie theater going, skip 60 pages, skip 45 pages, and skip, then it, you in, punch skip Phil in an the entire face. chapter. <laughs> yeah. Voldemort wasn't even in this scene. Yeah, and it's like, dude, okay, that's not fair. Yeah. Allow people to like what they like and dislike what they mm-hmm. dislike. That's yeah. okay. Yeah. And I do think that it also can be both of our, our, our mm-hmm. viewpoint and both of anybody's viewpoints right. in this regard is that you can allow movies to be a beautiful introduction or books to be a beautiful introduction to mm-hmm. whatever form of media yeah. that you wish to enjoy. Um, I think that in this regard, I think they had things that they had to do in the MCU in this show that... And I also don't think that they could have done in the MCU mm-hmm. universe that had, again, certain logos in certain places. They couldn't have done that in a Disney no, Plus show. The they couldn't have done that, like, you know. The beauty of it that I'm seeing, though, with, with comic books, as opposed to, you know, a book that's translated into a movie or a TV series, is how many versions of the comic book are already out there. Right. Sure. And so the, the movie is just... Just another version. It's just a different yeah. different yeah. writer. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. it's it's the whole thing with cover songs. It's with you yeah, know, right. I, yeah. I enjoy watching a production of Taming of the Shrew, but that doesn't pull away from my appreciation of Ten Things I Hate About You. Yeah, I, I you loved, know, yeah. same story. I right. loved you know the song American Pie up until Madonna did it. Well, see, and there you go. You know, I'm that way with the Ghostbusters theme that Fall Out Boy tried to, do. but you know. <laughs> But that's the thing. But there's a really bad... But I also heard a really badass cover of Don't Fear the Reaper this weekend. No. But I was going to say, also we talk about even, like, there's adaptations for comic book people that they enjoy, too. Like, Miss Marvel, for me, they changed two things very drastically. And I was like, that made sense. Like, that makes sense. You know what I mean? As long as it flows. It's the same... by the end. Yeah. (laughs) But but it's the thing is, like, as long as it flows. You you talk about the old X-Men movies, too how uh charles uh becomes handicapped like like magneto shoots which him. time yeah. but <laughs> magneto, magneto shoots yeah. him you know yeah. in the spine and i'm like okay that makes sense like i was like that, that that's good that's a good flow as long as it flows well and like that's all i care about because sure. that's what makes it more approachable i think that going off of what mike said 
We smell them. Keep Shelly in Athens. That's the name of the band. <laughs> keep Shelly in Athens. I was going to say, like, when you uh, hear... Keep Shelly in Athens, yeah. The okay. Proto Men do in the air tonight. That like, one too? That song isn't that great. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going on the fucking record right now. That song isn't that great. What is with you people? Why do, why do you do everyone when, really get into it? When you hear like, somebody else do it, it's sometimes better. Dun 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 Isn't that great? <laughs> if I can do it with my mouth, it's not that great. Go Some listen. of us had to live through the Listen. <laughs> I, I lived through only part of it. And it was it did things to me, all right? Damn it. <laughs> all right, sorry. Yeah, Join yeah, the I'm rest gonna... of us in our trauma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Right. Anything else to bring up before the last question? Yeah. Yes, I would yes. like to. I, I want to specifically bring up Clint's uh, hearing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, because we haven't really touched on it. We haven't okay. touched really. They they did such a beautiful job with all of the uh, like the disabilities that they brought in. Oh yeah, yes. absolutely. It was very very good. I so uh, something just uh, like uh, because I'm going through this personally now in my life as I'm as I'm getting older, I'm finding that I'm having hearing loss in one of my ears. So it's one of those things that I was like, oh my god, I have to handle this. And this is a form of media that's allowing me to handle it in a very cool, healthy way. Yeah, and like, like I'm allowed to provide context for it, and that's why it's just another one of those things. That, and and I yeah, I'm a you know a a white dude. Yeah, I don't need representation. I, you know, it's like we're, we're fine, you know. But it was really nice to just be like, oh, this is a struggle that I'm going through, and this is a cool th- bit of visual uh, support that is really cool. And it's one of those things that lends itself to, hey, everybody, you, we need to have more representation in our art forms. Mm-hmm. So just if you're a creative out there, make more fucking. Yeah, and them. done well. That's the thing yes. too. Is like. With Moon Knight, with Hawkeye, I mean, with with a lot of the show, even Wanda, like yeah. you got to be real. Like that's always my like, my God, they got to be careful with that because Miss Marvel, yeah, Miss Marvel. I, you seriously, have to we watched be... a Native American, a deaf Native American woman with a prosthetic leg kick the crap out of people. Yeah, but like the representation was good in a sense. Also, like like supporting people like Mike, but like being like the, you know not making them hyper special either mm-hmm. because of their power. Like yeah. it wasn't like. Oh, she's deaf, so she's super cool. It's it's like it's it's no, it's, it's super she's cool. super cool and, and deaf. deaf. Yeah, yeah. She's super cool and deaf. Not you know what right. I mean? Like she and that's yeah, the thing you're putting too. Putting the person first, right? Yeah, that's the thing too. Exactly is 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 with that, and so I think that that representation. I hope we see more of. I know we're seeing it in Miss Marvel, saw it in Moon Knight, and again, WandaVision. They handled grief mm-hmm. extremely well. I'm yeah. still blown over. It's been like two years. Um, I still think about it at least once a week. It lives right in my head rent free. Yeah. For one thing I do have to say about phase four, as much as I have gripes about it, it is the storytelling in that regard, the emotional storytelling mm-hmm. is something that I have never seen in television history. Yeah. It is absolutely at, incredible. At this point, they don't have um, introduction stories to fall back on. Mm-hmm. They literally have to tell human perspective stories. Yeah. Yeah. We know who Thor is. We know who Tony Stark is. We know who Bruce Banner is. Well, kind of, because we can't really... Yeah, yeah. That, but, it's okay. We don't need to talk right, about that. We don't need to talk about that because he's an icon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you, we know who these people are at this point. We know where they came from. We need to develop them more. Yeah. And make them more of a character instead yes. of these, like, because there is so a many... caricature. T- yeah, there's yeah. so many 2D yeah. characters yep. in this universe yep. that it's like, start giving some depth to the... Instead of just introducing yep. more people, they're, give they're, more depth to the people. Yeah, they are around. literally forced to at this point. Yeah. Well, and I think that the way that they're telling these stories is bringing that out as a conversation, you know, about, um, you know, hearing loss or having a physical mm-hmm. impairment or grief. Or having a mental issues, yeah. Or bringing out things like the story of the of partition between Pakistan and India. Yeah. I mean, it's it's bringing things out to have a discussion. Yeah. And those are real things that impact people yes. on a daily basis. Yeah. yeah. That are not. Oh, it's okay. I'll get my space hero with blonde hair to take care of my problem right. or my taxes or my what? It's like yeah. no. These are like these are superheroes that are dealing with like trauma, fam- fam- familiar right. trauma, actual or, human yeah, issues. Like, yeah, yeah. Which is like that. I am incredibly interested in. Yeah. Right. I love that level of storytelling because that's important and that storytelling that hasn't ever been told before on in such a way. 
uh, such a huge, I guess, blockbuster man up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, like, your favorite superhero used to be Tony Stark for that reason, because he was more, like, real. Yeah. He was real. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't, he, his problems were legitimate issues. You know yeah, what I mean? But then he became issues. a fascist. So, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it was like, you know, it's, it's, but, the, it's, but the point is, is to support what you're saying, though, is like, and, and again, they it's, it's very scary to walk that line, but I just think, again, we talk about the TV shows again. And how great the TV shows are, but the TV show representation is fantastic. Yeah. Well, and I feel like they are trying to do that in the movies as well. Mm-hmm. It's just a little bit more difficult because you, I, I think in the minds of the writers of the movies, that audience is a little more difficult to keep their attention. Yeah. So they came here for Thor swinging a... Uh, whatever, whatever he's swinging, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. Whatever's and, being, swinging. and being a big muscly guy, so they don't really want to get His into the fact. Is one scene. Yes, mm-hmm. they don't want to get into how he went through an incredibly deep depression. Yeah, yeah. they kind of they talk about it, but they don't really talk about it. You know, and it's like that. I, well, and also, so here's something that I would like to bring <clears throat> up about that this point particular, and I and I don't and I don't think a lot of people understood this context. Within Nordic culture and within the Asatru faith, there is a difference between the term depression and the term and what we know as depression. Mm-hmm. And like the idea that like they were going through, Thor didn't have anything to fight anymore. He didn't have any he, thing to conquer. He didn't have anything to see anymore. And that is a historical documented thing in the Eddas, the poetic Eddas, mm-hmm. that happens to heroes. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever fucking talked about this. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever brought it. And I wish that they would have gone into that. I wish right. they would have been, especially now with the talking about all these gods yeah. and all this. They could have been like, yeah, even gods have depression. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Look at this historical thing that like right. was written in books. Yeah. yeah. You know, like you could, and Ragnarok did such a good job at telling the Ragnarok story that I wish they would have also pulled mm-hmm. more of that poetic at a background and then yeah. like, this is stuff that's going on with Thor that, like, wow, in a historical context, this is what this is. But now, how do you deal with it in a modern context? Right. You know, like, yeah. that sort of thing. So you, you may not be a god, but look, even gods. Yeah, even gods have <laughs> yeah. depression. So, yeah. like, you know, like, what do we do about that? Right. You know, yeah. like, and let's, that sort of thing. You let's know? talk about it. Yeah. And, let's yeah. have a conversation. Yeah. And, then, and, yeah. and that also proves to anybody, any fucking neckbeard that wants to say that... You know, Thor would never fucking have that. It's literally in your books. Yeah. It's literally in your books. Read your fucking books. It's also in your movies now. Yeah, it's now yeah. in your movies dude, now. Dude, yeah, like, bro. Yeah, bro. Oh my God, bro. we're turning into books. We're turning books into movies. Bro. Why do we have to be so woke? Bro. Bro. Yeah, yeah. Bish- Kate bro. Bishop is dude, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you put hot sauce in this now? You're done? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, go look at what you had in your last question. So, yeah, there are four volumes, uh, graphic novels of the Fraction Run. Uh, let's do the last question. Start with you, Jen. Are you going to read more of Hawkeye? I might read a little bit more, actually. Uh, I did enjoy the, um, you know, we saw the, the series first, and then I read um, the first volume. And there were parts of it that I was just like, ugh, ugh don't really like this. But then I, there was, the, um, there was a storyline that I really enjoyed. Um, and I think that I could I could be interested in future storylines, the other volumes. All right, Mike. Uh, so have you read all three volumes? No, I only read the first one. But I was like, the fact that I read the first one was enough for me to be like, oh, I actually do like this. But then we started moving and all that yeah. sort of stuff. So it's right. kind of like, it's I'm looking right at it. It's right there. Oh, like, I know where okay. they are. They're Very right nice. there. Yeah. They're yeah. on the top of my bookshelf. So mm-hmm. I mean, they're I, I'm going to read them. Um, I it's the first uh, comic book that I actually was like, you know what, I would like to read the rest of this. So, if anybody is listening that doesn't like comic books, maybe you would like to start with this. This yeah. might be a thing that might get you into it. Yeah. It might be a thing that might help you. It also might not, tone, don't, like, whatever, teach their own. You know, yeah. so, so whatever, that's all good. No, I'll back you up on that. Because as the, the thing that pisses me off about reading comics um, is... The like stupid like why shit why does this character have to be here now yeah what is going on this doesn't make any sense well if you if I didn't read the fifteen comics of other characters before I felt like this kind of stood by it absolutely yeah that's yeah. the thing is that it that's the one thing that I think this story tell and this is why it made me feel better about reading it is that 
it didn't have so much shit that was like, oh, you didn't you didn't know about all this shit before. You didn't have to be in the club. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You don't need to be in the club to right, watch right. to read this whole run. Right. You like yeah, there'll be some people that'll pop up and things right. will show. But like really, it's okay. But it's can, more to interest you in perhaps reading something else. Yeah. yeah. Not not like oh, I'm a dummy because I don't know who this dude is. Yeah. yeah. It was like there was enough universe to just enjoy. Mm-hmm. My parents and I actually watched all of Hawkeye. Because I just put it on one day when they were like, what are you watching? And I was like, I'll put on Hawkeye if you like. And they were interested enough to watch all the way through it. They have not watched a single fucking movie. And that's fucking cool, that's cool. right? Yeah. I mean, that's like, you know, yeah. like, that shows that the base, that one, the base, like, IP is solid, yeah. right? You know, yeah. that's cool that, like, yeah. I've heard that people have never seen any of this could just really enjoy right. it. Right, right. Um, I think that and that just kind of shows and that, that's really cool that your parents are like, yeah, this is cool, you know, yeah. because it is. It's kind of a cool. But like this jackass is getting his ass kicked like twenty four seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> his mom also loves the Mandalorian. Uh, the Mandalorian and has not watched ass. anything it's Star true. Wars yeah. since Return of the Jedi. Yeah, dang. Well, I mean, the Mandalorian kicks ass. So. It does. Uh, Fair. Yeah. yeah. Um, I actually, uh, after listening to Mike, I really wish that I would had that phrase stuck in my head like several seasons ago. Like, you don't have to be in the club. To, to know what's going on here. And I, and I appreciate that. That's exactly how I feel about this this whole graphic novel. Is you don't... I, I shouldn't say that. There's maybe, like, one or two characters. Right, there's a few times where you're like... Right, where you're just like, who, who's that guy? But you know what? Doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter because, it doesn't like, he walks that. into the room, he says hi to him, and then he walks out. Right. And yeah. you're just like... And if you're, if you're part of the club, you know that's Luke Cage. If you're not part of the club, you don't care. Yeah. Right. You know, yep. So he just yeah. walks through and he's just like, okay, well, it's just another Avenger. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't know who that one is, but we didn't have an interaction with him. He said hi. Yeah. And he was talking shit to Spider Man. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was a good comic. Uh, am I going to read more? Like, if it's available and I have run out of things to read, I will, I will definitely read more of this. Um, I'm probably not going to go out of my way to look for it, but. Sure. Like, yeah. um, mainly just because, you know, we still have a, a, a massive reading list. Um, but was it good? Yeah. What, you know, if I didn't, like I said, if I didn't have anything else to read, would I keep going? Yeah, I'd actually probably look for more of it. Mayor, are you interested in reading this? Yeah, um, when Mike's done. Okay. Because well, I'm done with the first one. No, because I, I want him to, it's, it's just, I don't know, like for I me. I want you to be the expert. Oh. It's, it's, like I said, I've spent so many years being the expert, mm-hmm. um, which I love doing. I don't mean that as like it's a chore, like, but like. I want him to be the expert. I want to okay, read. Okay. Yeah, you're welcome. I love you. Um, I do. But I want to like read issue two and be like, okay, like what, you know, and then mm-hmm. Mike will already have been on issue four. Yeah. And so we can be like, okay, like, you know, because he gets so excited about it and his passion and excitement is enjoyable to me. So I'm going to. She wants to have a conversation thanks. with you. Oh, I know. Isn't it great? Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah, no, I'm blessed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too blessed to be stressed. Too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love you. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, I'll say oh, I've read yeah. all these. So I, I read them mm-hmm. uh, when I discovered them shortly after yeah. the Fraction Run started in 2012. And I know and that they, they are... have a very special place in like OG comic book fans. Yes, like mm-hmm. they are. They are. Like, they are put kind of up like a big deal, right? on a pedestal. They are. They are known to be one of the gateway comics, which I think you all kind it of shows. yeah yeah yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, hit on. Um, yeah, most other modern comics, you have to you have to basically get in at the ground floor, usually with indie comics. Um, you know, from a from a first graphic novel or something mm-hmm. like that. Especially with all the stuff that's had shows made of it. Mm-hmm. But this is this is definitely one of those that Fraction went out of his way to make it very welcoming for new people, and that's why there's such a love of this. It shows. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, Mike, Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank this you is a for blast. Being and opening here. your home. Yes, yes, of course. Of yes, course. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, we are honored to. Even though your cat has tried to kill I'm me. I'm sorry multiple that times. my cat <laughs> is trying to kill okay, you. First okay, first of all, Banjo is an angel. Never done anything wrong in his He's life. He's more so just wants to love on you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the 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 issue for the folks at home is uh, Josh is, has an allergy to cats, uh, but unfortunately, that makes Banjo want him more. Because yes. he's like, you're not paying attention to me. I must be doing something wrong. Let I, me get out of your Everyone else yeah. here has given me scritches. What the fuck is up with you? Yeah. I have, so I'm going to chew on your power cord. a special relationship with Banjo. And, and, and Noctis, <laughs> our other one, too. Oh, and Noctis, too. That's right. Yep. Well, everyone, uh, please tune in in two weeks when we will be doing Captain America, finally. One of the big... Uh, 
one of the biggins, and we will have Ms. Leia Cameron. So all the expert. of Graphically Novel will be represented at that one. Oh, but shit. At the same it, table. Yeah. <laughs> but until then, <laughs> take it away, Vandello. Nothing's ever as it seems. Nothing's ever as it seems.